Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts. Today I come to you from the lab. Yeah, that's right. This is where the plant magic happens, and this is actually my potting table. Um, you can see the soil bin and the peat pots in the background and all that stuff. Not too special, but for smaller plant specimens on this, on this show, I'm actually going to be doing things from inside the lab, because it's just so much easier to get things in focus and not have to be battling the mosquitoes and the sun and all that fun. Well, the plants you see before you are very special. They were grown in 2020 from seed through a company called Pine Tree. And no, they're not paying me for that. I'm just giving them props because they shipped me the seed. You should hit them up, though. Personal recommendation from myself to you. Well, anyway, these plants are sesame seed plants. Yeah, that's what sesame seed plants actually look like. Didn't know that, huh? Well, the variety is Sesamum indicum, Shirogoma. Now, the indicum means it's from India, and the sesame part is actually interesting. You see, sesame is the English word, but it's derived from the Greek word sesamon, which is then derived from the Semitic Akkadian word sesamu. Nope, nope, I botched that. Samasamu. Samasamu. Yeah, um, that kind of sounds like a Genesis song. Sam, Sam, Massimo. Okay, I'll stop. Anyway, uh, sesame is a hardcore annual. There's just nothing to be done about that. It lives about a year and then kaput. But its entire life cycle is producing seed, tasty seed for you to eat. So ultimately, by letting it complete its life cycle, you're not really encouraging it not to just go kaputs. Uh, in a growing season, it can get three to four feet tall. It prefers a soil pH between five and eight. Talk about variety. And uh, unfortunately, it's temperature sensitive. It will stop growing when daytime temperatures drop below 50 degrees, and it you shake an ice cube at this sucker and it's going to get frost damage. It loves the full sun, of course, because, you know, thermal gradients and all that. It is tolerant of drought, but it needs nutrients. So it'll take crappy soil. It's sort of likened, in fact, in cultural care to cotton, of all things. It'll take crappy soil and it'll still produce, but its productivity is increased based on soil fertility. So the better soil you give it, the more stuff you're going to get out of it. And looking at my two specimen plants here, mm, 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 look at all those lumpies. We're going to zoom in. You see those? And that weird backlighting, which is you know, almost, you have to expect Thriller to start in the background. Those are the pods from which sesame seeds come from, and those are spent flowers. Now, going further up and a little to the left, you can see the flower pod at center stage there. I'm going to zoom in. I don't know if this will help, but you can kind of see it there, waving in the wind. They're white tube flowers, and they're basically, you know, they'll open up and they'll have sort of a lip, and they kind of look like mimulas, or monkey flowers, except they're pure white in this case. I'm sure there are other colors, but I didn't grow this exotic specifically to get other colors. I wanted to challenge people at the market with stuff they never even thought they could grow. So y'all are the first to see what a sesame seed plant looks like. I gotta say, they're kind of pretty. I Pictures of them in the initial research indicated that they look something like oleander, but boy was I wrong. Now, here's some interesting facts for you. The nutritional value of sesame per teaspoon, that's 9 grams, will provide 1 milligram of sodium, 42 milligrams of potassium, 8% of your daily calcium uptake, 7% of your iron uptake, and 8% of your magnesium uptake. Not bad. On the medical side of things, for medicinal use, and yes, again, I always do this disclaimer, but... If you're going to use any naturally occurring herb for medical use, I urge you to consult with your doctor, with professionals, with good, credible literary references before you start, you know, trying to treat your gallbladder problem with Okinawa spinach or whatever. Sometimes, although it is noted to treat something, you may have an adverse reaction. You may actually be allergic. You never know. 
It's better to be safe than in the hospital, especially during the COVID epidemic. Now, apparently, sesame had, may lower blood pressure, and it may be an anti-inflammatory. Additionally, it is noted to be a source of plant protein. Now, the plant protein part is verified. There are a number of products on the market that are alternative meat stuff that use sesame seed oil and or some aspect of sesame seeds to make the fake meat. If that's your ballpark, fine. I prefer the real deal, but that's just me. Now, I'm going to say that even if you don't grow sesame for the seed, sesame is a beautiful plant. The white flowers, the shape, the loose airy foliage, and you can see it in the camera view here. The stems are fuzzy. Every part of this plant is covered with a light, fluffy hair. That's kind of neat. It's actually a passive defense against bugs and critters and stuff, which is neat. It helps repel rain from pooling anywhere, which staves off diseases, so it's part of the plant's defensive mechanisms. With that said, though, if you like this uh, lab edition of Lost in the Farmer's Garden Shorts, let me know. I'll do other plants, small plants that I can bring in and, and talk smack about, and uh, hopefully you'll like, subscribe, maybe make some suggestions and comments, or, you know, what have you. That's all I have for you today, so uh, remember folks, keep them growing, and thank you.